A very good afternoon to you. Welcome to Nationwide on the NTA. My name is Ogochkuka Ona. Thank you for joining us. The federal government has unveiled the draft national policy on skills development to solidify its agenda on transforming the nation's education sector. Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Maman, at the pre-validation meeting of stakeholders, says the path is now clear for elevation of educational standards. Zenret Dingmo reports. After a series of deliberations and consultations with development partners, the Federal Ministry of Education has come up with this document that provides guidance and tools towards designing and implementing programs and interventions that promote skills development in Nigerian schools. This convergence, however, is to review and validate the policy with stakeholders' insights and innovative ideas to ensure it meets the needs of Nigeria's diverse communities. The only solution conceivable for now is for us to couple the education at that level with skills. Soft and hard skills are already working on a curriculum, fresh curriculum, that will be implemented in all pre-tertiary education schools in Nigeria. This policy aims to bridge the gap between the labor market, ensuring that our young people are not only academically equipped, but also possess the practical skills and competencies that employers seek. No investment made in skills development and human capacity development is wasted. Engaging the communities will be vital for effective implementation of this policy. Indeed, it is very important to have a comprehensive and all-encompassing national policy that addresses all learners, including adults, and their specific skilling needs. The national policy on skills development in Nigeria is anchored on four categories, foundational, transferable, digital skills, and job-specific skills. In Abuja, Zen Redding Moon, NT News. Nigeria has for decades depended on oil-based petrol, despite abundant oil and gas deposits, neglecting its enormous gas resources that can power the economy. While the country was using its hard-earned foreign exchange to pay for and subsidize petrol, President Bola Tinubu came on board with a resolve to change the narrative and deepen gas utilization. Lydia Sampson has details. Determined to address visible gaps and challenges in the oil and gas sector, President Bola Tinumbu took a painful but necessary decision to remove failed subsidy, which key players have applauded as saving the country from imminent economic collapse. Determined to address envisaged difficulties that came with fuel subsidy removal, the president immediately launched Compressed Natural Gas Initiative to power transportation economy and bring down cost of transportation and production. This will save over 2 trillion naira a month being used to import petroleum and diesel, as well as free up much needed resources for more investment in healthcare and education. The presidential initiative on compressed natural gas has since hit the ground running. We've identified 123 conversions uh, workshops. Our goal, if you remember when we launched this last year, was that we should have 100 by the end of this year. But just in the month of July, we've already identified 123. And our goal ultimately is to have between 1,000 and 2,000 of them operational in country by the year 2027. When this conversion is done, not only transportation of people that will come down by about 50%, but even the cost of food will come down considerably. If team works as it is, I believe the cost of transportation will reduce. We at Bolt, we see this as an opportunity to offer some relief to the people of Nigeria in terms of transportation. Some commercial motorists are already testifying about the game-changing impact of CNG. I've been using CNG for five months now and the experience has been wonderful. I would expect that uh, the government ensures that there is full implementation of the PIA. And full implementation meaning that the market forces will determine the cost of the petroleum product. This is the dream of Mr. President. His consistent statement is that we must make this available to Nigeria and this dream is becoming true. 
will construct all the modern stations across the six geopolitical zones already work in progress. Mr. President has made it very clear that gas is the transition fuel. We are sure that there are so many earning industries in the country will come to limelight. Similarly, the country has increased oil production to 1.61 million barrels per day and the nation's gas assets are receiving the attention they deserve. Investors are coming back to Nigeria with two foreign direct investments signed for over half a billion dollars since then. Industry players are unanimous that the oil and gas industry is on track and the president's laudable reforms will continue to make Nigeria an oil and gas hub in Africa. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Normalcy returns to the nation's capital, Abuja, after days of agitation by protesters. Let's join our business correspondent, Bosede Ibel Amosu, for an update. The usual hustle and bustle for daily bread is returning to this part of the metropolis, known as Area 10 UTC, one of the busiest business hubs in Abuja. Actually, I'm a graphic designer, so I have to come back to work because I have some unfinished job on ground. So that was why I came out. I don't know for any other person. A drive along some banks showed that most commercial banks are rendering skeletal services and are optimistic things will normalize as the day progresses. In Abuja, boss of the able and also continues. Ekiti State Governor Biodun Uyebanji has reiterated his commitment to discovering and nurturing talents in arts and creativity to promote Ekiti State's cultural heritage. The governor disclosed this during the foundation laying ceremony of International Center for Arts and Culture in Ado Ekiti. Olukemi Sami Sani reports. The state government has embarked on various projects through the ministries in the state to enhance the performance of governance for the growth of the state. It was the turn of the Ministry of Health, Culture and Creative Economy as Governor Biodun Oyebanji laid the foundation of International Center for Health and Culture. The governor described the project as another initiative by his government aimed at encouraging youth to showcase their skills in health and culture, saying the center will serve as a tool to protect Ekiti heritage. It's a visionary project that will serve as a beacon of our rich heritage, as a testament to our commitment to the arts. This milestone in our efforts toward fulfilling a better part of our promises to Ekiti people. Commissioner for Culture and Creative Economy, Professor Razak Bakari, commended the governor for supporting the vision of the ministry with the project which is for the proper mainstreaming of culture in the state. The project, which is expected to be completed by March 2025, will comprise of a utility hall, museum, recreation hall, main theater, restaurants, staff quarters, and offices in Adrekiti, Olukemi, Sony, NTA News. Now, Bauchi State Governor Bala Mohammed has cautioned people joining the nationwide protests in the state against involvement in violent attacks, as that will only lead to the setback of the nation's economy. This is the governor's remark shortly after holding an emergency Security Council meeting at the government house in Bauchi. Awal Abdullahi reports. This emergency security council meeting followed the recent attack by some hoodlums on public and private property who hide behind nationwide protests in Azare town of Katagon local government area. Governor Bala Mohammed, while expressing dismay over the activities of some groups of protesters, also advised for proper understanding of the effort put in place by the government at all levels. It is not about political party, it is not about the federal government, it is not about the subnational or local authorities, it is about governance at all levels. And if you segregate it down, it is about leadership at all levels, even the traditional rulers who have heeded the call, but certainly we have taken very firm and very serious measure to make sure that this thing does not happen by the declaration of curfew 24 hours in Azare and making sure we are going to assure all the citizens and people of Bochi of their safety and security. The meeting was attended by head of security agencies 
religious and traditional leaders alongside other relevant stakeholders. In Bauchi, Awal Abdullahi, NTA News. Adiola Komiakere has the next set of reports, including that of the army combating post-traumatic stress. Over to you. Ogochukuka and welcome to Lagos. Beginning with the army, just as Ogochukuka said, towards achieving its constitutional responsibilities, the Nigerian army believes equipping the band corps, a vital arm of the army that plays a key role in providing musical entertainment for all regimental and social needs of the Nigerian army, is paramount in reducing traumatic stress among officers and men. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Taurid Lagbaja stated this at a gathering marking the 8th Army Band Corps Conference in Lagos. Joel Bokbola completes the report. They are always on the field, day in, day out, sacrificing their time and putting their lives at risk in the line of duty while working to ensure the nation's territorial integrity and our citizens are protected. And of course, achieving this core mandate does not come without traumatic stress among the soldiers and officers of the Nigerian army. The annual conference by the Nigerian Army Band Corps is aimed at sharing ideas on the best approach to effectively combat security challenges in the country without traumatic stress. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Taurid Labaja represented implored participants to seize the opportunity offered by the training to brainstorm and come up with implementable decisions that will propel the Corps and the Nigerian Army to greater heights. Looking at the security challenges in the country and the numerous operations Nigerian Army personnel are engaged in, obviously the place of musical therapy is prime in helping us address post-traumatic stress disorder in the military. Highlighting the crucial role of the Band Corps Director Nigerian Army Band Corps, expressed delights at the newly established band units by the Chief of Army Staff, stating that the initiative will spur the band corps to do more in the discharge of their duty. The annual conference with the team, Musical Therapy, a panacea for combating the menace of post-traumatic stress disorder in the Nigerian Army, was an opportunity to take stock of the achievements of the outgoing director, Army Band Corps, Brigadier General Gerald Nosike, who is bowing out of service. The outgoing director urged officers and men to remain loyal and respect constituted authority in line with the ideals of discipline synonymous with the army. In Lagos, Joel Bukbola, NT News. Technology beyond access to information as well as services is transforming the global economy and Nigeria is not an exception. Experts are of the opinion that with the rate of technological advancement, the Nigerian economy, if well positioned, will greatly benefit. Adejo Keodeka reports. Data from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, NBS, shows that activities in information and communication technology, ICT, contributed 16.66% to Nigeria's real gross domestic product, GDP, in the fourth quarter of 2023, which showed an increase in contribution when compared to the 16.22% recorded in the same period the year before. As the world evolves, leading to increase in mind-blowing innovations and technologically proficient people in many fields, learning technology skills is very paramount. In the future, nobody is going to want to do hard work. Most people are going to want to take the easy way, which is looking like it's going to be technology. It has helped me to be ahead of my peers in the field I'm studying and to become more relevant. And another benefit is you can have a job you're doing right now and have an online job too. It enables you to have multiple sources of income. Tech experts say although it is of utmost importance to be familiar with technology skills, one has to keep improving in order to navigate the digital world. Technology skills are actually very important because you need them to be able to succeed in any profession that you have today. Businesses are now beginning to use, beginning to use technologies to power their activities. One of the key economic gains that new tech skills brings uh, to a nation is increased revenue 
Now, this revenue can be in two parts. It could be as a result of diaspora remittance, and it could be as a result of the uh, revenue generated while they are still within the country. The experts also believe adoption of new tech skills, which have paved way for increased innovation and new jobs, should be embraced by youths. In Lagos, Adejoke Odeka, NTA News. And those are stories from Lagos for now. It's time for us to take a break. And when we return, Salamato in our Kaduna Network Center will pick up the next set of reports. Tune to Nationwide and welcome to Kaduna. To attain national development, a secured and better environment must be provided for the youth and children to be able to acquire education without fear or intimidation. Haruna Muhammad reports that this is the message of the Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa, in a message to a workshop of the Defense Headquarters held at One Division Nigerian Army, Kaduna. As the saying goes, education is the bedrock of development of any nation and bandits having schools as soft targets for their nefarious acts, with Kaduna having its fair share in line with the renewed hope agenda of the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, President Bola Ahmed Tunubu, the workshop with a team providing a secure and safe learning environment for the advancement of national development featuring all stakeholders, including teachers and parents, is targeted at providing a safe and secure learning environment across the country. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa, and the coordinator of the Safe School Initiative, in a message, emphasized the importance for safe school across the country while hampering on the need for synergy among stakeholders. The Kaduna State Overseeing Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Alwan, acknowledging the initiative, restricts the state government commitments. It's also a part of training for them to know those basic things they need to do to help other security agencies in the protection of our school and also to provide enablers or have some power bikes that they are required to be able to get to where most of these schools are located. We also have communication equipments we need to issue out to them to make it seamless in case they have to respond. We don't plan to respond, we want to be proactive but just in case we need to respond, let the troops know what they're supposed to do. It now becomes imperative for all critical stakeholders to come together under one umbrella so that we can be able to ensure that the atmosphere for learning is conducive, free from threats to uh, education. Motorcycles and gun bikes were launched to further enhance the operation. In Kaduna, Haruna Mohammed, NTA News. Away from Kaduna, Kanum State Government has launched the first phase of its maternal, newborn and child health week targeting 3 million children and 3 million mothers. This initiative aims to provide and preventive services including free maternal care, vitamin A supplements, immunizations, deworming for children and free antenatal services in all the 44 local government areas of the state. Let's hear more from Elizabeth Yila Lamido. Eight-month-old Husna clung to life in a small sterile room, surrounded by a team of doctors desperately trying to save her. Her mother, Rukaiya, sat beside her, tears streaming down her face, feeling the profound helplessness of watching her baby fight for every breath. What could have led to this heartbreaking scene? Kusna had been admitted to the intensive care unit of Angua Oku Primary Health Care Center with a severe case of malnutrition. Despite the medical team's best efforts, Husna's frail body couldn't endure the battle. Rogaya's wails echoed through the hallways as she carried her lifeless child home for burial. This tragedy could have been prevented with timely medical care. Probably um, they've been taking the child to patent medicine vendors instead of hospitals and then they'll present here late. So such late um, presentation tends to worsen the patient's prognosis. Husna's story is sadly one of many. 
Babies with malnutrition are brought to hospitals late, displaying various symptoms, some emaciated, others with swollen limbs and distended bellies, classical signs of kwashoko. In the most severe cases, their skin breaks into painful lesions. In response, the Kano State Government, in collaboration with development partners, has launched the first phase of the Maternal Newborn and Child Health Week. This initiative aims to provide free maternal services to over 3 million women and immunize more than 3 million children in a week-long campaign. We are set to decentralize and expand community management of acute malnutrition. Right, uh, we seem to be having a uh, lot of signal from that end. We'll do this when I continue in Abuja. Normal activities are gradually returning around Abuja city with security relaxed at strategic places such as the Eagle Square and its environs. Our correspondent Joseph Otsin has an update from the Abuja central area and Mushuda Biola National Stadium, venue of the protest. The nationwide protest here at the Mushud Abiola National Stadium is calm. With just a few um, protesters here, numbered are just about five. They are staying inside the stadium and not outside. People are not allowed to gather outside except inside at the main board of the National Stadium. But because there are so few, they are hanging around just uh, around the threes. Behind me, there are journalists who are also there to cover the event. But as the days of the national protest wind down, it seems we are having more journalists here than the protesters themselves. Meanwhile, in other parts of the town, like the Secretariat, the Eagle Square, the Unity Fountain, we saw no protesters there. Also, a drive around the town shows that there are more vehicular movements and a lot of businesses opening up. Uh, it seems things are returning to normal and there's calmness everywhere. In Abuja, Joseph Otsen, NTA News. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, and truly, there's nothing that has a beginning that doesn't have an end. All right, uh, Kano State Government has again relaxed curfew imposed on the state capital from 18 to 12 hours. Governor Abakabe Yusuf disclosed this at the end of a Security Council meeting held at the government house. Abdullahi Mustafa has details. The cause of the bulletin and reports from Kaduna says the 24-hour curfew imposed on Kaduna, Zaria and environs by Governor Ubasani is in full force with major streets including the popular Amadou Bello Way MT. Our correspondent Haruna Mohammed, who monitored the compliance reports that residents remain informed with some seen seated in front of their houses. Meanwhile, security operatives are at various checkpoints to ensure compliance as well as safety of lives and property. In the meantime, a joint security press conference has been concluded at the defense headquarters convened by the Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa, in response to the ongoing nationwide protests marred by pockets of unrest and looting. The service chiefs, the Inspector General of Police, DSS spokesperson, the Controller Generals of uh, Customs and Immigration Services and Commandant General of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps were all at the conference to address the growing concerns about the protests, which have seen some demonstrators waving a foreign flag in some states. We love Nigeria, we love the country. We are mindful of the fact that we are being paid, we are being equipped by monies generated from the country, and so we are duty bound to protect the country. We are only after those that are against the state, not those that are innocent. So I want to make that very clear. We will continue to work together as a team to support Mr. President in achieving his mandate of peace and tranquility in our dear country, Nigeria. 
Further reassuring Nigerians of protecting the nation's interests, the security heads called for peace and calm, emphasizing the need for protesters to express their grievances within the confines of the law and respect the country's institutions, stating that waving a foreign flag is an act of treason. The Russian embassy in Nigeria issued a statement on Monday dissociating itself from the flag-waving incident and affirming its respect for Nigeria's democracy and sovereignty. The embassy's statement came amid speculation about the origin and meaning of the foreign flags and served to dispel any notion of external interference or influence. Meanwhile, the heads of security said the Joint Security and Russian Embassy's statement underscore the commitment of Nigeria's security agencies and the international community to upholding peace, stability, and democratic values in the country. As the protests continue, it remains to be seen how the situation will unfold. But one thing is clear, the need for dialogue, understanding, and peaceful resolution has never been more pressing, say, the security stakeholders. And similarly, the act of flying foreign flags by some protesters has been described as treasonable offence and perpetrators of such acts should be dealt with accordingly. This is a position of a civil society group during a press briefing in Abuja. The group, however, commends the armed forces of Nigeria and other security agencies for effectively managing the situation. The group appeals to organizers of the protest to suspend action for Nigeria's interest and give room for dialogue. All right, we'll be going to Enugu now for more reports and comforts. I am is there. Hello, comforts. You are on. The Enugu state government has approved the sum of 183 billion naira for the construction of 141 roads across Enugu Metropolis and 20 rural roads across the three sanitary zones of the state. Chika Ugu reports that this was part of the resolutions reached at the state's executive council meeting presided over by Governor Peter Mba at the government house. Briefing newsmen after the ESCO meeting, the secretary to the state government said government also approved the award of 133 more smart schools in addition to the ongoing construction of 127 smart schools. According to him, the 141 roads approved for construction are part of over 200 roads captured for construction and rehabilitation before the end of this year. The 20 rural roads are equitably distributed across the three senatorial zones to accelerate rural development. If you recall, it was 71 roads initially and 10 rural roads. But now we're going to be pushing for 141 urban roads and 20 rural roads, usually around our economic corridors, roads that usually have not been touched in the past. On security matters, the Commissioner for Information explained that the ongoing high-tech security surveillance camera installation across the state will soon be fully operational to aid security. By September this year, open defecation will be ended in Enugu State because about uh, 120 communities will benefit from uh, the boreholes as well as um, the toilet facility that we provided in these 120 communities. They also revealed that POS went to the state government's agriculture and agro-industrialization drive. The state government has built about 200,000 hectares in its land bank for agricultural purposes across the 17 local government areas. In Enugu, Chika Ugu, in a move to address the challenges of unemployment in the country, the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment has trained 40 young Nigerians from Southeast Zone in various vocational skills of their interests. Utena Namile's report is here presented. So far, not like how I intend using it, I'm already making use of it. 
the advanced uh, training that I underwent, even before this uh, graduating ceremony, I've been able to execute projects using what I was taught, using the skills I garnered here. I thank the federal government of Nigeria, I thank the labor and employment unit, to show that I'm more than grateful. Although I've gotten an experience of catering before, but through this training, it was upgraded. These are some of the beneficiaries of the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment Vocational and Skills Acquisition Training for youths in the Southeast Geopolitical Zone. And we are trained on various skills, such as pipe fitting and plumbing, hairdressing, body care, tailoring, hotel and catering works, amongst others. The State Controller and Director of Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment, Mr. Chuka Omuna, explained that the aim is to create employment in the country. We train you first, issue the certificate to you. You can use it all over the world because it is recognized. We're also empowering them, which will go a long way in making sure that uh, they start off. They can on their own train other people. They can on their own add value to the economy of this country. The principal skills upgrading and vocational training center, SUVTC, and the instructor, plumbing and fitting, both encouraged the beneficiaries to make judicious use of the skills acquired. There were goodwill messages from stakeholders as well as presentation of certificates to the graduates. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. And as a package from Enugu, let's now take you back to Ogotukuka in Abuja for more reports on Nationwide. Ogotuku. All right, thank you very much, Comfort. So we'll be heading to Makudi now, where we have Charles Abba. Okay, Charles is not ready at this time. The news continues in Abuja. Information and communication technology ICT has been identified as a critical component for optimal healthcare delivery in Nigeria as the world strives for sustainable healthcare coverage. This is the focus of the training for continuing professional community healthcare delivery for tutors in the Northeast held at the Modibo Adama University, Yola. Simon Asha reports. The role of primary healthcare practitioners in providing healthcare service delivery to the doorsteps of the people, especially grassroots, cannot be overemphasized as the first line of defense against all kinds of diseases. Hence, the need for them to be trained and equipped with modern technical know how on disease diagnosis, prevention, and treatment in tune with changing times. They for the 2024 mandatory continuing professional development program for primary healthcare tutors in the Northeast. With a theme, innovative approach for transforming primary healthcare tutors, career integration, ICT skills, imperative for collaborative learning and sustainable universal healthcare coverage is to serve as a platform for knowledge exchange and capacity building of participants. The purpose of this training is to uh, be updating the knowledge and the skills of our primary healthcare tutors uh, from time to time in order to go in accordance with the uh, current training and uh, services they are going to provide in their various institutions. Research persons took turn presenting topics on leveraging technology to enhance maternal and reproductive health, hands on training on national examination software, computer based training, principles of infection control, cancer screening, and risk assessment are said to be carefully chosen to address the present needs of healthcare system in the Northeast. We also give the students the knowledge that they will have to ensure that they stand the test of such challenges. With the aim of ensuring quality training so that we have a more competent health manpower. If you get it right there, then the number of patients coming to secondary and tertiary healthcare institutions will be remarkably reduced. At the end of the training, the tutors are expected to step down the knowledge gain in their respective states for optimal healthcare delivery in the society. In Yola, Simon Asha, NT News. We'll be talking roads infrastructure when we return after the break. Stay with us. 
Following non-performance, uh, some road contracts were terminated with many others undergoing review. This has brought life into many abandoned road projects. But calls for the restarting of road projects, especially in areas under security threats, are becoming louder. Abdullahi Mohammed reports. Are falling down and the contractors are playing in a okay. game. The urgent scenarios and the urge to make road transport a lot easier for the common man was behind the move to terminate non-performing road projects across the country. But this hammer did not spare projects in areas under security threats and the people are counting difficult days. It's one of the roads that links the frontline local government of insecurity in this state. Most especially here in Kankara, it's one of the endemic area of insecurity. So we are appealing to President Bola Ahmed Tinibu to please ensure that we are making our passionate appeal to please ensure that this road construction will be completed. Along this road, from Marabang and Kankara to Katana, there have been so much banditry. So we want the federal government to take a serious action. Gankara Dus Amar Roads in Katsina State crisscrosses about seven local government areas to Niger Republic. In Abuja, Abdullahi Mohammed, NT News. Bias State Government is sustaining efforts in internal road construction despite the ongoing rains in the state to meet up with developmental programs. Timinepre Ohia reports that this came to the fore when the Commissioner of Information and that of Works jointly embarked on inspection of ongoing road projects in the state. Deficit road infrastructure is the bane of development and with initiation and construction of roads and bridges by the Biasa State Governor, Senator Doye Diri, is a testament of his administration's commitment to developing the hinterland and ensuring access to medical facilities. Commissioner for Works and Infrastructure, Moses Tebowey, and his information counterpart inspected some of the major projects being executed by the Prosperity Government of Senator Doye Diri to include the 630-meter Yenogwa, Operoma, and Giyama Bridge, which upon completion will link up over 200 communities in the southern Ijo local government area. Others are the Akaba Okodi Road, Glory Drive Phase 3, Etegwe New Market, New Legislators Quarters, and major roads within the new Yenogwa City. I strongly believe that by the end of next year, all the dual carriage roads within this new Enegua City GRO will be completed. Then government will now go ahead to handle the single carriageways. I'm particularly excited, I'm happy, and I want all Biasans to move around and see. The commissioner further reveals that plans are on the way to also address housing infrastructure development in the states. In Enegua, Tsiminipri, or here, NTA News. And talking education now, the 2024 speech and prize giving day ceremony of Command Secondary School Suleja is an outstanding milestone of performance showcased by students. Scholarly exhibition Abdullahi Suleiman Yaji reports on the exceptional graduation which drew admiration from parents and dignitaries alike. Command Secondary School Suleja celebrated a significant milestone as the school marked 20 years of providing education and shaping lives of students. The outcome of their investment in education. Best in physics. Representative of the commander, Nigerian Army Education Corps, and other people of vested interest took turns to highlight core values of the command secondary school, Suleja. Have all been distracted. Be focused. Pursue your dream with passion. And with the fear of the Almighty God, I can assure you, you get there. Remember, you should be ambassador of one Nigeria to our then graduating students. Today is your day, is your day. We can see your face beaming with smiles and satisfaction. The academic prowess of the students is evident 
in the various literary works, including novel, poems, and school magazine, which they co-authored and proudly presented to the public. The earlier said, I, because of the launching of the magazine, he said he pledges 100,000 to offset the cost of production. You have to embrace lifelong learning. Learning will continue to make your brain to be sound. The main inspiration of those books came from our commandant, Lieutenant Colonel Araliu. He inspired us through his talks, his motivational words. They were also urged to be ambassadors of the institution by upholding discipline and moral values instilled in them. Abdullahi Suleiman Iyaji, NTA News. Education in this present time and age should go hand in hand with teachings of morals, virtues, and sound religious values that will groom children to be disciplined, patriotic, and good citizens. This was the take home for participants of the 2024 graduation on the journey of faith conducted by the National Council for Women's Societies in Abuja. Monso Demian Dati has details. <laughs> Education, religious or Western, has a purpose of acquisition of knowledge and enlightenment to do things differently and impact on one's society positively. I still have a lot of waiting for me, but still I'm very happy. Work hard and never give up. Reason why the National Council for Women's Societies, in collaboration with some educationists, are advocating for a solution based learning where children are thought to proffer practical solutions to evolving challenges. The pursuit of knowledge is seen as a way to better understand the world, improve oneself, and fulfill one's responsibility. Catching them young. So, and when you catch young, you instill your principles into them. But with the help of the school, she was able to put her words together. Their spoken English is very good. She's even writing a book. The school has properly prepared her for the future ahead. For these stakeholders, it is essential to arouse in young children interest in new discoveries while instrumentalizing knowledge with updated paradigms. Momsa Damien Lati continues. Meanwhile, in Kano, the Kano state government has again relaxed coffee imposed on the state capital from 18 to 12 hours. Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf disclosed this at the end of a Security Council meeting at the government house. We now join Abdullahi Mustafa for details. As usual, the Security Council meeting was held behind closed doors. Led by Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf, the meeting had in attendance heads of security agencies in the state. The end of the security meeting was the beginning of that of the State Executive Council. It was at the Executive Chamber that the Governor announced the decision to review the curfew from 18 to 12 hours to enable residents to continue their daily engagements between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. The government is doing everything possible to ensure that our youths are empowered to become self-reliant. More than 600 suspects were arrested and been detained by the Kano Police Command. Due to the large number, three chief magistrates were deployed to the police headquarters to handle the trial. Because of the uh, weight of the allegations involved, all of them will have to be remanded and uh, subsequently a uh, trial will uh, co continue. While prosecution continues, Governor Yusuf's spokesperson, Sanusi Doakin Tufa, disclosed plans by Kano State Government to constitute a commission of inquiry into the violence. In Kano, Abdullahi Mustafa, NT News. And now sports. Hope prizes for Olympic medals as Nigerian athletes hinge close to podium finish. Olumide Iguntala has more on sports update. Nigeria's Eze Brumi, Ruth Uzoro, and Christina Ochonogo are true to the final of the women's long job event at the ongoing Paris Olympic Games. Brumi hit the automatic qualification mark of 6.75 meters. 
limping 6.76 meters, while Ruth and Pristina qualified as part of the top 12 performers with the best jumps of 6.68 meters and 6.65 meters, respectively. The final is scheduled for 7 p.m. Nigerian time on Thursday, 8th of August. Still on the Olympics, United States of America team is on top of the medals table at the ongoing Paris Olympic Games Tuesday with 21 gold, 30 silver, and 28 bronze medals. Meanwhile, Nigeria's favor of Philly and blessing Oborududu will be the signature of all eyes Tuesday as Team Nigeria attempts to get on the medals table. Ophili will attempt to become the first ever Nigerian African sprinter to win the 200 meters Olympic gold medal after Mary Oyali's bronze medal feat 28 years ago in Atlanta 1996 Olympics. Ophili takes on World Super Powers Tuesday at the final of the 200 meters event. Nigeria's Toby Amushan will begin a campaign on Friday when the women's 100 meters orders will start. In another news, Kendall Amidi reports that the United States government is upgrading some facilities at the Akure Stadium. The State Commissioner for Youth and Sports, Saka Ogunleye, who disclosed this, promised that the state government will further motivate the athletes to perform brilliantly at the forthcoming National Youth Games and the National Sports Festival. Mr. Governor, graciously approved the upgrading of this sport council. But we are talking about upgrading. We are trying to upgrade our facilities that are obsolete. We have listened to our coaches here and there. We also identify with them. With sports updates, Olumide Egutola, NT News. And that's national by today. Thank you for watching. Do have a blessed evening and remember to stay safe.